for Men's Health Show. So I am Jakira, and this is an extension of the Sea Life Different podcast. So we have the Black Women's Health Show every Thursday, 3.30 p.m. Central Time, 4.30 p.m. Eastern. And we are talking about medical disparities. So I am your host, Zakira, and I am a brand cultivating strategist and author. And I raise awareness for medical disparities because I am also an indigenous black woman who is modernized and checked off all of the diversity boxes. So today we are celebrating a lot of anniversaries, a lot of firsts, one of it being the 50th anniversary of National Disability Employment Awareness Month. And according to the U.S. Department of Labor, uh, they are honoring the passage of the Rehabilitation Act of 1973 by choosing to advance access and equity. And it's also the 30th anniversary of Oklahoma Department of Rehabilitation Services, also known abbreviated on social media as OKDIS. On July 1st, 1993, uh, OKDRS had been mandating that they educate students who are blind, deaf, helping adults with disabilities to make sure that they find employment and understand that they are uh, eligible for medical resources and even to receive Social Security disability benefits. So today's special guest is Valencia M. Wilson, who had been employed with the state of Oklahoma for 15 years. For the past 13 years, she has served as a vocational rehabilitation specialist and now for the last two years has been the program manager for the Oklahoma State Department Rehabilitation Services, OKDRS. She also holds an undergraduate degree in sociology and a graduate degree in rehabilitation counseling from Langston University. In addition to her full-time role at OKDRS, she is also a licensed professional counselor and a supervisor for the Community Mental Health Agency. So she's very passionate about advocating for individuals, especially with diverse, uh, diversity and disabilities. And she was going to talk about why she enjoys doing what she's doing when she's not working and spending time with her husband and three children. So Valencia, thank you so much for being here. How are you today? Good afternoon, Ms. Akira. Uh, thank you so much. I'm feeling great today. Um, thank you again for this platform uh, to be able to discuss with you. Um, why we are here in the community, the Oklahoma Rehabilitation Services, and what the resources are uh, for individuals with various types of disabilities, health, mental health, physical health, um, blindness, uh, deafness of the sorts. Um, we are just so excited um, to be able to uh, bring to you in on Historic Greenwood um, the information uh, to help the community today. And thank you also for your advocacy. And you're very passionate about it. You know, you've been, uh, you've studied it, you do it on the side, but why are you so passionate about it? Well, Zakara, my why, really I kind of fell into it, um, I would say over 20 years ago. Um, I have a, um, a family member, as we all do. We are all, you know, diverse individuals and all have individuals in our families. Um, that we assist. Um, this particular family member uh, has a mental, el mental health um, illness and um, just assisted her with finding employment. When things went wrong on that employment, I was her advocate, um, trying to assist her with sustaining that employment. And so uh, just for, for years, um, I, I was doing it, I didn't know it. And so it was just so befitting um, that I, when I decided to further my education at Langston University, um, that I connected with individuals who assisted with um, leading me down the right path uh, to be able to uh, earn my undergraduate um, in the sociology field as well as the master's in rehabilitation counseling. Um, and I can honestly tell you, Zakara, that every single day that I walk into that building, um, my, my passion is fulfilled. Um, I am um, truly um, doing what I believe God has called me to do. Absolutely. And that, that's what matters the most. You know, when you're walking in your purpose, you will definitely be aligned with people who will take you there. And I think I feel that that's the missing piece when it comes to making sure that there's less discrimination in a disability uh, employment awareness. Um, so I have a personal story. Although I am an entrepreneur now, I have had my fair share of working jobs. But I remember uh, uh, before applying for the job, I would hide my disability, mm -hmm. my different ability, because I'm not sure how would they actually handle it. So yes. I would tell them once they get hi once I get hired, but I was like, let me not say anything until I get hired just to see what they would do. So what are some resources that people who may be wanting to apply for jobs, and but they don't even know that they have resources out there? What are some tips and resources that you have for people? So the Oklahoma Department of Rehabilitation Services, uh, as I stated, we... Uh, assist individuals with various types of uh, disabilities and you would start with an application 
Um, you can reach us um, on the website at www.okdrs.gov or our um, free hotline at 1-800-845-8476 in our Oklahoma City um, um, corporate office. And they will connect you with the right um, um, individuals and offices throughout the state. We're all, we have offices all throughout the state of Oklahoma, um, and we go uh, follow according to the zip codes. So here in Tulsa, we have um, all of our um, territories uh, split by the zip codes, and you just call into the office uh, or to the hotline, and they'll connect you right to who you need. Um, and every case that we have uh, is individualized. So we have no cookie cutter plans. Um, we're really um, trying to connect with that individual to meet their individual needs for a successful employment outcome. Yes, and I definitely hear that because that's kind of what I hear makes it different, especially for those applying for schools, right? It's needing that cookie cutter, that hands-on, that here's how you can, we can help you get there. Um, voc rehab, I know, is super important, especially for those um, who get uh, different abilities and become disabled later on in life. Um, what uh, resources or maybe mental health tips do you have for those who really did become disabled later in life and they feel like there's no hope for them? Okay. Well, all of our uh, vocational rehabilitation counselors are master level counselors. Um, so we have uh, studied and we're, we've been trained to deal with um, our clients in that individual way, uh, whether it's they're um, newly disabled. Um, we, are, we provide uh, adjustment training. Uh, for that individual to help them, um, you know, along in life, um, they may not be ready for that employment just yet. So there's some counseling, some there's some adjustment training that needs to happen first uh, for individuals who have had a disability. Maybe it's, it was congenital um, or through childhood. We we are trained just all along the steps of life, the the life uh, span um, of uh, of the of the person to be able to uh, accommodate their needs. Okay, and so speaking of um, having specific people to accommodate their needs, um, I think it's super important. I remember when I was getting into, um, I was in high school, mm -hmm. and so for me, I've always been prepared for the worst, right? I can see you now, but I'm always prepared for not being able to see you. I can hear you now, but I'm always prepared for not you. But I had not been, had I not had my voc rehab services, I probably wouldn't have known that. So. Um, what are your tips for the parents? Let's flip it to the other side. What about the parents who are ready to just, you know, they know they want to support their child some way or another because they're about to almost be empty nesters, but it's not a difficult, it's not an easy transition. So what are your tips for parents? You're exactly right, Zakaro. Um, our department has what we call a transition services, and that's probably what you're speaking of, uh, for our youth uh, starting at age 16. And it does exactly that. It prepares them for that transition uh, what is their next step after high school? Is it going to be vocational training? Is it going to be college training? Is it going to be job placement? And so we work closely with our parents because, yes, uh, they maybe not, they don't want to let go so soon. They don't want individuals, um, they don't want their, their child to be discriminated against. They want them to be treated fairly. Uh, they want them to be able to go into employment and to apply um, the, the regular or the normal way. Uh, and by the way, we, we keep the words normal and regular out of our vocabularies. Um, so anyway, we want to uh, give that parent the assurance um, that they are in good hands with our uh, most able staff, uh, our, our master's level professional staff, and to be able to walk them down um, the aisle um, to move them towards employment uh, with uh, courteous and professional services. Okay. Got it. And so um, one of the other aspects as well is uh, Social Security Disability Benefits. Um, maybe talk about that process, because I think what's happening is you, people read the headlines about all the changes that's going on, but maybe they really have no idea what OKDRS actually does to really assist them in that aspect. Yes. Our clients who are on Social Security Benefits, um, our department has a specific um, uh, department for that, which is called our Benefit Planning Department. And those individuals are also mastered level clinicians, um, and they have a certificate in um, their, their social security um, curriculum and services that they can offer to um, our clients. Um, they are allowing uh, that individual to be independent. Um, they are uh, providing um, uh, clients' rights and clients' choices, clients' consents um, as to how much money 
um, that they can earn that may coincide with their benefits so that they are able to keep their medical benefits and or if they have a cash benefit. Now, DRS is um, in the business of assisting individuals, those individuals who can and want to come off of those Social Security roles. Um, so we are, we're trying to um, get them to that skill or to that educational level where they are able to earn a, a livable wage, uh, gainful employment. Um, but we do have a whole department dedicated to just professional education to our clients about their Social Security benefits as it relates to their housing, possibly their SNAP benefits, um, or any other type of public benefits. So they, are, they can be well taken care of um, at our department and would not have to worry and receive open and honest communication about their Social Security benefits. Absolutely. And just from hearing you share that, um, it sounds like everyone's really in good hands with uh, all of the resources that OKDRS provides. And so we are almost done with the conversation. And so I want to, um, I think I want to ask one interesting question I love to ask all my guests is, what do you want your legacy to be? Oh, wow. My legacy. Um, I, I would say that um, I would want to be remembered as ethical. Um, I would want to be remembered as um, exemplary. Um, not exemplary in the in the form of uh, perfection, you know, none of us are, are perfect, but I want to make sure that I've done my best um, every single day, uh, day by day, hour by hour um, of, of good service, the best service that I can give first to God, to my husband, to my children, to my community, and to my work. Zakara, so we can be located on the website at www.okdrs.gov. You can call us at 1-800-845-8476. That's 1-800-845-8476. Locally, um, you can reach myself um, at our uh, office at the Sun Building. That's a 907 South Detroit, Suite 910. Um, again, my name is Valencia Wilson. I am the Programs man Manager for the Adult Unit for the VR Services. I really, really appreciate your time today. Thank you, Ms. Valencia Wilson. All right, so please continue to listen to the Black Women's Health Show every Thursday at 4.30 p.m. Eastern, 3.30 p.m. Central Time on The Greenwood Beat, online on our website at thegreenwoodbeat.com or on TuneIn and Apple Radio. And be sure to tune in and tag us on social media. Tag us at Sea Life Different on social media or at Sea Life Different Pod or at The Greenwood Beat and let us know your favorite parts about the episode. Until then, we'll see you next Thursday. Thank you. Thank you.